Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And people often ask me, is there anything practical you can do with these 3D printers, specifically these relatively inexpensive $200 to $1,000 home-based 3D printers? And I'm going to give you an example today of something very important that I just did with my monopriced Ultimate 2 printer. My great nephew, Benny, had an airplane emergency. Uh, this little airplane here had two rudders. I believe these are called rudders. You, someone can correct me in the comments if I got it wrong. One broke off and he lost it. So I'm going to show you today how I modeled an airplane rudder in Tinkercad, a very low-end modeling program, and printed it on my 3D printer so you too can repair those broken toys around your house, those games missing pieces. It's all easy with Tinkercad and a 3D printer. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, I'm not going to argue that it is cost-effective to print a new rudder for this uh, toy. Yes, the plastic is literally a couple pennies, but I spent a few hours modeling this rudder to get it just right. Could I have done it in less? Absolutely. In probably 15, 20 minutes, I could have done something, this is an example of my first uh, experiment, uh, that would have worked. But I wanted to really get it right, and I wanted to make sure that I was teaching you techniques you can use to repair lots of things around your home, not just toys. I'm going to use Tinkercad today to model this rudder. Tinkercad is not the ideal tool. A better tool to model or repair, a part for repair, would be a parametric computer-aided design program like Fusion 360. But while some of my viewers probably don't know what that sentence means, others do, those that do understand you don't learn a parametric computer-aided design program, parametric CAD program in an hour. You can learn Tinkercad in an hour. So while the results won't be absolutely perfect. They'll be pretty darn good, and you can do this very, very quickly. To get started, though, we're going to start with a paper and pencil. Very old school. The first thing I want you to do is to look at the part you want to model and very roughly draw a shape that more or less represents that model. This does not have to be to scale. It does not have to be accurate because we're gonna use Tinkercad to make it more accurate. But I need to know what to draw, what to create in Tinkercad. So how do I do that? Well, I measure this existing model. So if I have a piece, I can measure that. In this case, there are two rudders. I can measure the existing rudder and the base here is about 35 millimeters. But you'll notice here, and this gets a little tricky, we'll see if I can put this in a way you can see it, the rudder is at an angle. So there's another five millimeters there. So the overall width of the base is about 40 millimeters. Then I also have a little section in the middle that's about 10 millimeters, and it's about 9 millimeters in. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to mark that 10. I'm going to mark this 9. I need to know how high it is. And it's about uh, 31 millimeters. And I'll end up with a drawing that looks something like this. Not very fancy, not very elaborate, um, but it'll do the job. 
Now I need to look at this drawing because if I was using a parametric modeling program, I could determine these angles, I could model this exactly. But I'm not, I'm using Tinkercad. And the way Tinkercad works is you start with basic shapes, let's say a cube or a sphere, which are the three-dimensional versions of a rectangle and a circle, a pyramid or a wedge, or something that looks like a roof, various forms of triangles, and you combine them together like stacking Lego blocks to build something. So this shape does not exist in Tinkercad. But when I look at this shape, I can see that it actually really represents three triangles. And I need to use three triangles because this line here is not vertical. So by positioning three triangles properly, I can create this shape. So the first thing you have to do if you're going to use Tinkercad is figure out how you're going to combine shapes together to make this all work. Okay, let's turn to Tinkercad now and create some models. Now, you shouldn't be surprised if you don't get it right the first time. Uh, I printed a number of different models to get it correct. I printed a model, I tested it, and then I improved it. As an example, this little tab on the bottom I found needs to be thicker than the top of the rudder. That means I cannot print it flat because this will be hanging above the print surface. So I ended up having to print these vertically. So let's show you how we take and model this. So click on Create Design. And we're going to start with a wedge. And let me zoom in a bit. I'm going to rotate the wedge around 90 degrees. And then look at it from the front. And I'm going to click this little button here to switch to flat view because it'll make it easier to work on this type of model. So now I know that the width in total is going to be 40, but we have these different triangles. So if I do a little bit of simple arithmetic here, um, I find that it needs to be about 31. So we're going to make this dimension here 31. And it just so happens it's also 31 tall. Now let's rotate around a little bit because the depth is going to be the thickness of the rudder. That's going to be 1.5. So now we have a basic rudder here. So now let's add the additional triangles to make up the rest of this shape. So we're going to start with by dragging in a roof, make it 31. And this is going to be nine. And the depth is going to be 1.5. So we're going to position this just like this overlapping a bit. And to get it positioned perfectly, go down here to Snap Grid and change it to 0.1. And then you can use the arrow keys to get it lined up pretty well. Now, I'm going to duplicate that, Control C, Control V. And then I'm going to take and flip it horizontally. And I pretty much have the shape of my rudder now. So if we look, rotate this around, we'll see everything looks good, but let's make sure it all aligns. So we're gonna select it all, rotate around, and click on align. And we'll zoom in a little bit so we can find this middle dot here. We're gonna make sure they're all centered together, and then we're gonna zoom back out. Now all we need to do is put that tab on the bottom. So to put the tab on the bottom, I'm going to drag a box in. Let's drag it over here so we can see it. I'm gonna make, once again, the thickness, instead of 1.5 millimeters, I'm gonna make this a little thicker. So it fits in this slot over here on the back a little more tightly. So I'm gonna make that three millimeters thick. The height doesn't matter a lot. We'll make it six or seven here. But we do know it was nine millimeters wide. 
We're going to position this here, but before we do that, let's select these three and group them together. Then select this and the major shape and click on Align, and we're going to align them in the center there. Now, to determine the height of the tab, we're going to select the main object and click on the little arrow on the top and pull it up. So if we want the tab to go four millimeters down, then we'll move the um, height so that we are four millimeters off the top surface. Now, if we rotate this around, we'll see it's a, you can see it from both sides because it's a little thicker. We're going to select it all, group it, and we've now created our rudder. So now we'll give it a name. We'll call it Airplane Rudder. And we're going to do an export as an STL, and that will put us in it in our download directory. Now all we need to do is load it into a slicer and print it on our 3D printer. As I showed you earlier, this is the final print, so let's see how this works out. So I'm gonna take this off my print bed. Because it was printed on a brim, the supports held to the brim, and I was able to literally snap the rudder off. That came off very easily. We'll take and we'll insert it here on the airplane, and it fits great. Let's finalize this with just a drop of super glue. So I have here some industrial grade super glue. I, uh, I buy this online. This is a brand called Stick Fast. Uh, this happens to be the thick super glue. So I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom here, alongside this tab, a little bit here and here. And the thick super glue gives you a little longer time, drying time. I'm going to stick that so it looks just about right. We'll hold it there for a minute. While that's drying, folks, I want to thank you for watching today. I hope you learned something. I hope you also learned in particular that you can use a very simple program like Tinkercad to model repairs for objects around your house. Very often things don't have to be absolutely perfect. If they do, you would have to use a more sophisticated CAD program. Um, but for our airplane, this is just about perfect. And I'm going to give this back to Benny. And he says he's going to repaint it uh, so it matches even better and put some designs on the side. So thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share this. Share your comments in the comments below. Uh, share this video with people you think might find this interesting. When they ask you, why'd you buy that 3D printer? Share this video and show them what you can do. And then ask them, do you have any broken toys? Do you have games missing parts? You can solve all those problems. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.